Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. What's going on, everybody? So I am back and recharged after a night off yesterday. I spent the whole entire day watching sports, betting on sports, and acting like a complete and utter Italian degenerate. It was fantastic. I had wagers across the whole board, folks. Every hockey game, some soccer games, and all nine UFC fights were all wagered on. Absolutely fantastic. I miss days like that. With sports not being on because of the pandemic and Saturdays being absolutely terrible up until recently, it was a nice change. It was really nice to be able to wake up and know that there was going to be a whole day of sports on. And today is going to be the same way. No UFC, obviously, but a ton of hockey. All right, so today, our article deals with the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family and the fact that he spent time at Zorro Ranch. Now, as you all know, well, those of you who have been listening to the podcast for a while, those of you who have just joined us, well, welcome. You should all know by now that my sources when I was in Santa Fe also stated that Prince Andrew had been at the ranch, was there, and that it was known amongst many, many, many people that he was hanging out down in Stanley at Zorro Ranch. So this article today from The Sun is basically corroborating that and talking about how Prince Andrew spent time down there. And, uh, well, he has not admitted it once again. Another lie, another, well, I I wasn't involved type of story. And, you know, the saga goes on with these people. No matter how much evidence is provided, no matter how many witnesses corroborate statements, no matter how many receipts are brought forward, these people will continue to lie and try and wiggle off of the hook. That is why it is crucial and super important that these people are slammed with an iron-clad RICO case. They can be given no room to wiggle. They can be, the, the, zero room can be given to them to use loopholes because we all know that that is their tried and true strategy when it comes to things like this. And we already see it with Ghislaine Maxwell. We already see it with her law team. They're not trying to say she's innocent. No. What they're trying to do is use loopholes. Oh, well, the prosecution acted improperly. Uh, is your client guilty or innocent? That's really the question everybody's wondering. Not if, some, oh, oh, they're being mean to Ghislaine. They're going to out her disgusting sexual life. Well, here's a great idea. Don't hang out with Jeffrey Epstein. Don't uh, molest little kids. Don't abuse women. And don't be a general all-around scumbag. And then you don't have to worry about getting aired out. But unfortunately, for sick Bipedal serpents like Ghislaine Maxwell, they are hardwired to be just that, sick and disgusting. All right, so our article today is from The Sun. The headline, Erotic Massages. Prince Andrew, a.k.a. the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family, spent two days alone at Jeffrey Epstein's ranch with billionaire pedos abuse victim court documents claim. A manuscript written by Miss Roberts, who was 17 or 18 at the time, says the Duke had a really good time and that she gave him erotic massages. Well now, folks, we know from previous stories that Prince Andrew was most certainly at the island. He says he wasn't. We most certainly know that Prince Andrew was at Zorro Ranch. He says he wasn't. Do you see a theme here, folks? Do you see what the common theme is here? 
He is an absolute liar. Everything he says is a lie. Every single thing he says about this case, for sure, is a lie. Because we know that the evidence is mounting. And we know that the circumstantial evidence alone is damning. Damning enough that he is no longer part of the Windsor family, basically, right? He's been ostracized. He's no longer supposed to go to any kind of events, etc., etc. But yet this man still continues to use those weak-ass alibis that he brought forward. And just like his disgusting buddy, Alan, I kept my underpants on, Crypt Keeper Dershowitz, they have the audacity to use their family as an excuse. Oh, well, my family was there. At first for Dershowitz, it was, oh, my, my wife and kids were there. And now recently his grandkids were there too. Notice how his story keeps changing? For somebody who says he's such a, 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 you know, a truth-telling man, that story of his sure does change quite a bit, doesn't it? Miss Roberts, now 36, says she was later awarded with close to $1,000 by Epstein, the Sunday Mirror reports. And that was typical of Epstein, how he rolled, right? He had these girls, people like Virginia, ensconced. He had them wrapped in his atmosphere. They were in his orbit, and they were forced, as part of this sex trafficking ring, to do his bidding, to collect blackmail, to put these people in compromised positions. And that was what the nexus of this Jeffrey Epstein criminal organization was. That is how they conducted themselves. That was how things worked. It was all about collecting this information. It was all about the blackmail material. Oh, don't get it twisted. Jeffrey Epstein had his own proclivities, and he was a sick bastard, and those proclivities were used and weaponized by his handlers. But it was not just about his sexual desires. It was not just about his needs. While Jeffrey Epstein was able to satisfy his carnal desires, he was also able to move things forward for this intelligence operation. The claims emerged in newly released court papers, which Epstein's former girlfriend, co-conspirator, fellow child abuser, general all-around scumbag, Ghislaine Maxwell tried to block the Sunday Mirror reported. Describing her time with Andrew around 2001 at Epstein's 7,559 acre Zorro Ranch near Santa Fe, New Mexico, Miss Roberts wrote, My job was to entertain him, entertain him endlessly, whether that meant having to bestow him my body during an erotic massage or simply taking him horseback riding. And now, we know it's Virginia's story. We've, we've heard this story before, right? We know that Virginia was subjected to some horrible shit with Prince Andrew, according to all these accounts. And we know that Prince Andrew, a.k.a. the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family, most certainly was out Zorro Ranch. Not only with Virginia, but what about with the neurosurgeon? Did we forget about that? So again... It's not just Virginia coming forward and saying he was at this ranch. It is the other sources talking about the, neuros, uh, the, the neurosurgeon. I forget the lady's name who worked for Epstein at the ranch who talked about that. And my own sources when I was in Santa Fe investigating Zorro Ranch absolutely corroborated all of that. And not only that, they corroborated the fact that Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton also were regulars at the Zorro Ranch. So these are things that must be discussed. The legacy media is is out of, absolutely must be on vacation or something because I'll tell you what, this is explosive stuff and this is the sort of thing that these journalists should be all over. So it makes you say to yourself, if you haven't been following the case, why the hell would these journalists not cover this? And the answer is simple. Well... Because they've been complicit. The mansion was completely empty, save a couple of maids who also cooked our dinners for us, and a couple of bodyguards that we hardly even saw at all. She claims Maxwell arranged for her to go to the ranch, but did, but did not tell her who would be there. And this is typical as well. When we, you know, go back and we look at the way things were conducted within this criminal enterprise, and the way Ghislaine Maxwell 
would conduct herself as far as setting these girls up with these sick bastards, this falls right into line with everything else we know and with everything else we've heard. And the fact that these people can't be honest enough to even admit that they were at this ranch, that goes to tell you, that, that goes to show you everything you need to know, folks. If you can't be honest about basic details of your behavior while being around Jeffrey Epstein, then what else are you lying about? When she returned from the ranch, she described the reaction of Epstein and Maxwell saying, They were like proud parents. They looked at me with such content. Good, you did really well, Jeffrey complimented me. Can you imagine? Look, let's just pause for a second and imagine being in Virginia's shoes. Imagine dealing with the things that she dealt with, the, the, the after effects, how, how, much, how much that much must weigh on you, your sho- on your shoulders, and the, the mental battles you must face on a daily basis. And to have somebody like this bitch-ass MF, Alan Dershowitz, drop all of that word salad out of his mouth that didn't even make sense, attempting to demean Virginia and trash her is just unconscionable. It is just absolutely unconscionable to me. If Dershowitz wants to defend himself, that's fine. I think a vigorous defense of yourself when you're accused of something like this is a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea to bully people, demean them, or trash their names. Not a really good look for the powerful Mr. Dershowitz. In fact, it's just another bullying tactic. She said the convicted sex offender paid her close to $1,000, more than I thought anybody at my young age could make for a couple of days of work. And remember too, folks, Virginia wasn't coming from a place with a lot of money. She wasn't coming from a household where, you know, they were throwing money at her and she always had dough to go do whatever she wants. She comes from, uh, you know, she came from a place that a lot of people in America come from, a lot of people around the world. You know, things weren't always easy at home, and especially for a lot of these other girls. Those were the sort of girls that Epstein and Maxwell looked for to prey upon. These girls were the most, the most exposed amongst all of us, the most at risk amongst all of us, and these sick bastards targeted them purposefully. It is so gross, and it goes beyond the pale. In other claims reported yesterday, Miss Roberts claims Andrew had an orgy with numerous under numerous other underage girls at Epstein's Caribbean home and Maxwell had continuous sex with girls and women. We know this is a fact as well. We know that this has come out by several of the survivors. And we know that there have been corroborating witnesses as well. People who have seen things on this island and at Zorro Ranch who have been ignored by the legacy media. Well, guess what? They can no longer ignore this story. They can no longer ignore what occurred. The issue is being forced. The Duke of York, a.k.a. Joe Exotic of the Windsor family, has been accused of sleeping with mum of three, Miss Roberts, three times when she was a teenager. He has denied any involvement and all the allegations. Well, you mean his team has. Prince Andrew is busy hiding behind mummy skirts right now. Hiding in Buckingham Palace. Oh yeah, you know, the same place that Ghislaine Maxwell had unfettered access to? Yeah, that's where he's hiding right now. Miss Roberts claims she met Andrew on a trip to London with Maxwell and Epstein in 2001 at Maxwell's house. Maxwell, who dated Epstein for a period in the 1990s, is in custody while awaiting trial on charges of trafficking minors for her farm- former partner. Yeah, and she also abused people. She also uh, threatened people. She also conducted all of the business as far as a leadership role would, would dictate. And she played an intricate role in the whole entire scam. Let's call her what she is, please. Andrew stepped down from public royal life following his disastrous Newsnight interview, which he failed to show remorse over his friendship with Epstein and little empathy with the sex offender's alleged survivors. Yeah, that's a pretty uh, fair accounting, right? He looked like an absolute moron in that interview. He looked like he was barely able to function at a uh, at, at, at an adult's level of cognizance, and he continuously BS'd. Easily. Easily. 
his alibi had holes punched in it. His excuses had holes punched in it. And yet, this man still has the audacity to act like he had nothing to be ashamed of, like he had no role within Jeffrey Epstein's enterprise. And again, folks, this isn't just an enabler. This isn't just somebody that was used as a conduit to get into polite society. This is somebody who is directly implicating, implicated in abusing young girls. He has also been urged to come forward and be interviewed about his friendship with the disgraced financier, pedophile, who took his own life while in prison last summer, allegedly, awaiting trial on sex trafficking and conspiracy charges. The Duke's spokesperson declined to comment. Oh, I'm sure he did. I mean, why dig the hole deeper, right? At this point, there's no point in this idiot trying to dig the hole deeper. So he's going into silence mode. He, 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 it's like when you turn your phone on, onto like airplane mode. That's what his life is like right now. The Joe Exotic of the Windsor family's whole life is on airplane mode. And guess what? He should be happy and lucky that that's all it is. Because if this world had any true justice in it, if we had any real justice in this world, the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family would be sharing the same fate as Ghislaine Maxwell. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that pertain to this episode are in the description box. And for everybody who donated to the GoFundMe lately and ever, thank you so much. All right, everybody, we'll be back tonight with the Daily Drop.